Hi, welcome to Uncle Tim's farm. I'm Uncle Tim, and in today's episode, I'm going to be out clearing debris off the electric fence, as well as checking on the cows. I'm out taking a walk this morning, checking the electric fence, and walking over to check on the cows, see how they're doing. Pretty chilly out this morning, right at freezing. Starting to warm up now that the sun's up. So it feels good to take a walk. Had a wind windstorm the other, well, not a windstorm, but just a windy day the other day. And, uh, blew some trees down, so there's probably some branches down on the fence somewhere. As you can see here, this big bodock tree, they like to lean over like this, but that big branch up there is cracked and eventually it's gonna fall. And of course, fence is right underneath it. So that's probably gonna be a mess. I'm gonna have to clean up one of these days. That tree's actually right on the neighbor's side of the fence, but then hangs over on to my side of the fence. Clear to the ground. They're crazy trees. Cows are out in that pasture down below there. I'm just continuing to walk along the fence line here. Checking for down branches or down trees. Looks like the squirrels have been using this old down tree for a table cracking open nuts and eating them I guess they don't like to clean up after themselves so I'm here at a junction in the fence and I'll test it on this side see we've got two kilovolts and it's showing 38 amps so that means there's definitely something shorting it out so then we got this fence that tees off and it's only showing four amps so there is a little bit of an issue that way but then when we come on the other side we can see it's still showing 28 amps of draw so definitely an issue down this way of the fence well, Here's one branch down, but that's not causing too much trouble. Fall off the fence. That that's not enough to have grounded it out anywhere. Test the fence again. You can see that bottom number closer you get to the problem the kilovolts that number goes gets lower and lower as you get closer to the problem you can see that lower number the kilovolts the number on the bottom keeps getting lower as we get closer and closer to the issue A week ago I put out eight bales for the cows and that should last them about two weeks unless we had really cold weather which we haven't had but you can see they're getting them worked down there's some more on up the pasture ways but they should be good for another week cows must be up front getting a drink at the pond It must be getting close because it's it's definitely dropping kilovolts are dropping and the voltage is dropping well I think I might have found the 
problem here. Got this old tree that fell over onto the fence and pulled the post old post over. And barbed wire is touching the fence. So I'll check it on this side. Yeah, we're down the point. I have to show 400 volts. And then if we check it on the other side, well, look at the amps also, 31 amps. So if we go to the other side, we should see a drop, yeah. So that tells us definitely this is part of the issue. So if I push that, I can't quite get it. <clears throat> Let's see if I can do it from this side. Ooh. Sounds like it's touching in multiple places. All right, hold on. I'm gonna have to turn the fence off. So the fence should be off now, and it is. So the way I turn the fence off is I have my fence charger plugged into a smart plug in my house that's connected to the Wi-Fi. And then I have an app on my phone, I can go in and control that plug. So if I'm out here checking the fence and I need to turn it off for a minute, just go to that app, pull up the fence charger and just turn off that smart plug, make the repair, and then I can turn it right back on. So now I'm gonna have to try to get this old tree off the fence and get the barbed wire to where it's not touching. We'll see how that goes. Well, that was not real easy. That tree was leaned way over out there. Tried to lift up the bottom of it, but it was still stuck in the ground. Whew. So what I had to do was go out there and then tilt it up straight, stand it all the way up and then push it over. And then able to get it to fall out that way and then this old fence post just laid it over and now the barbed wire is not touching so I'll go ahead and turn the fence on and then we'll give it a test okay the fence is back on now so we'll see what we've got oh that's much better six kilovolts or six thousand volts and only 2.9 amp draw that's much, much better. Definitely hot enough to keep the cows in. Now I can go check on the cows. There are the cows way off in the distance there. It's actually not as far as it looks maybe 150 yards, 200 yards. Whew. Anyhow, we'll go see how they're doing. I'm getting this bale work down, but got a little bit of stimmy stuff mixed in there. But overall, it looks like it's decent hay. Good enough for the cows. Count the cows, make sure they're all here. Look them over, make sure nobody looks sick, puny, anything. There's 20 head of cows and calves in here. So I need to make sure they're all here. Looks like they're all here. Well, none of them look like they're in too bad a shape. They all look like they're actually doing pretty good. This cow's here is a little bit thin, but she has some dairy in her, so she's going to be a little bit thinner than the full beef cows. One of the other reasons I like to come walk through and check the cattle is it helps calm down these younger ones. You can see that black one there in the back. She's getting a little nervous with me being around. But all the, all the older ones are nice and calm. They don't care. So I like to just come walk through them, walk around them, 
and it helps these young ones settle down when they see all the other older cattle not getting too excited. That way I don't have a bunch of wild cattle running around. I don't want to have wild cattle. Well, that calf there with the kind of droopy ears, the orange tag, he's looking a little thin, but his mother was also a dairy. Not this one here, but she, we don't have her anymore, but he's looking a little thin, but not too terrible. The rest of them are all in good shape. There's my bull, South Pole bull. And then right behind him there is his bull calf from this last summer. And that's his mother there in the back, not the black cow, but the, one on the, the other one on the left. That's his mother. And that's probably my best cow. She probably could qualify as a mini, mini size cow because she's pretty small, but she raises big old calves every year. They're, they're small when they're born, but she gives a lot of milk and they grow fast and get big. So that you can see that bull calf's good sized bull calf to come out of that little bitty old cow. Yeah, it looks like they're all doing well. Yeah, see, you can see those young ones all get a little nervous. But they'll settle down throughout this winter with me coming over here and checking on them. And you see the other older cows don't get too excited. Go check on their salt while I'm here. Make sure they have plenty of salt. That's really the only supplement I give them is salt. You can see these older cattle are much more calm. Even this one, she's, uh, I guess she's just going to be a two-year-old this year. Not quite two yet, but anyhow. Much calmer, and that's just from having me walk through and check on them throughout the winter. Yeah, they got plenty of salt. And then there's a fence here dividing, keeping them out of this front pasture. And I've got some bales scattered around this pasture. So when it's, when they're run out in the pasture they're in, I'll go ahead and cut the wraps off these bales and turn them in here. And let them have this. And you can see it's been kind of warm lately. So we've got some green coming up. Looks really nice. They're all standing here hoping I'm just going to open that gate and let them in there so they can go eat all that green stuff. But we've got another week to go before I turn them in there. Here's another issue that I run into the, with the fence. Is that uh, I get the deer running through and knock the fence off the post. And now uh, I don't know where the insulator ended up. Oh, there it is. Right there. Anyhow, deer will run through here, especially the bucks will go duck under this fence and they'll catch it with their antlers, pop it off these posts. Looks like it's popped off a post down there too. Anyhow, this whole stretch of fence, it's this little thin old rusty wire. I'm going to replace it all this winter with, a, I think this is like 17 gauge, probably pretty small stuff, hard to see. I'm going to replace this whole stretch with a 12 and a half gauge, a big heavy duty uh, fencing that's much easier to see. And it's, it's a high tensile wire. It's not gonna break like this stuff breaks fairly easily. Anyhow, I'll go ahead and get this put back together and go back and go down there and fix that issue down there too. Cause it's definitely off the post down that way. The way that I, Hook this up without having to turn the fence off. I'll just go ahead and hook that. Hook the insulator on the wire. And pull it back to the post. Do it one-handed here without zapping myself. And then just tighten that back down. Get this post up a little bit. what 
we got one down here. Oh, it's just laying on the ground. Try to find that insulator too, or if not, I've got extra ones I leave on the posts every so often just for something like this. If there's one gets lost, sometimes they pop them off. Oh, there it is way up here. That really popped really 10 feet, flew off the fence. It loosened up and put back together. I got that back together, but I can see this fence is just really droopy, so there's definitely a problem one way or another. It's not touching any wire because there's no wire, or it's not touching a post because it's playing, carrying plenty of voltage, but it's probably laying on the ground. That drags it down some, not near as much as is, as if it's grounded out, touching a post or wire. Anyhow, I'll go ahead and walk and see what I can find. Came upon this while I was walking the fence. Left of a small buck. <clears throat> Somebody probably wounded him and he ran off and they didn't get him tracked down. Made it over here. So I walked the fence out to the road and found one other post that had insulated popped off and got that taken care of. Now I'm walking back towards the back of the pasture and I can see there's an issue because this fence is drooped way down to the ground, saggy, so something is going on. Oh brother, I think I see the problem. Yikes. Not supposed to be a tree laying that way on the fence. Holy moly. That's the top of a tree laying right on the fence. Here's where it came up by the roots. Got a big wind and blew it over. Trees get these vines growing up in them. You can see all those vines, and even these vines attach up into the neighboring trees. But they just, the tops of them just get loaded up with vines, and it kind of chokes them out, makes them really top heavy. Then you get a big wind and with some wet ground, and takes the whole tree over. And usually it's a tree right next to the fence and it lands right on the fence. Just like that. That is a mess. I'm gonna have to have a work day to come over here and clean that all up. Oof. Boy. Let's go back here and take a look at these vines. There's some big, major vines in this part of the forest for some reason. Look at that. Vines running everywhere, running up in those. And that tree. And they get up there and just choke them out. And they, I don't know how they get from one tree to the other. But you can see, look at right there. These two vines crossed somehow. And then there's another huge vine. Or several vines right over there that are all grown up. Look at that. When this tree fell, it almost took those other two trees just because of the vine. Vines loading, loaded up in tops and dragging these other trees down. Man. Just running everywhere. Oh, it did take that other, that tree down right there. Smaller cedar tree. Pretty much drug it down with it. All the vines, man. What a mess. What a mess. This portion of the fence is always a mess. Anyhow, it has all these blackberry bushes and stuff that grow up. My plan this winter when I replace this thin wire is to run it back up in the forest here in a different spot. 
instead of out here in the open where the weeds and brush grow up around it and you can't get in and bush hog it. So this whole stretch of fence needs to come out anyway instead of going down through there and around. It needs to be routed back up here through the forest and right behind where that tree fell and then back through there. It'll be much better getting it moved. But anyhow, like I said, that's a mess. Well, that tree that fell is right back up that way. And right down here at the corner, I guess the stress of when that tree fell popped the insulator. Broke it right in half. So now I gotta temporarily put something here and then come back later to fix it up. I can get this insulator wedged in there somehow. Try to do it without getting shocked. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the fence off. I was able to oops, wedge that in there. Keep it from grounding out on the post. We'll see. Yeah, this portion of the fence is not hot as the other one because obviously that tree had it laying on the ground. Anyhow, it's back up and working for now. But yeah, I have to come clean out this mess. I may just have to bite the bullet, go buy my heavy duty wire and route around this. I was gonna wait a, another few weeks before I did that, but judging by that mess up there where that tree fell, looks like it's time to go ahead and do that. This is the kind of stuff I expect to find after a windstorm. Branches laying on the fence. Somehow, they always find the fence. It's amazing. Here's another spot where we got a major issue. This big thorny tree laying right on the fence. Need to get in here with the chainsaw. Take that out, we'll have to do that. Same day we clear out that other mess. Anyhow, yeah, this is just a mess in here. You can see this tree had fallen on the fence already, and now that tree there is laying right on it. So these types of issues are not as big of a deal as far as drawing the fence down, taking the voltage out of it, but they are a big deal because it's a lot of work to and then with the chainsaw and clean up you can see the gold locust tree. Nasty thorns. Looks like thankfully most of them have fallen off so it shouldn't be too awful. But yep, definitely gonna need the chainsaw. Well, I think I found all the major issues with the fence. We're running close to 6,000 volts now. So I'm headed back to the house. Pretty good climb. From this back pasture up to the top of the hill and then drop back down into my house on the other side. Good exercise. Made it to the top and headed down. All downhill from here. You can tell I'm not very sneaky today. Well, I think that's it for today's episode. Got the cows checked, got the fence checked, and mostly fixed. Found some more work to do. But on the farm, there's always more work to do. Anyhow, thanks for watching, and uh, come back. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Thanks.